Hey everyone, and welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to be looking at creating ourselves a player character. Now, when creating yourselves a player character, it's very important to know that this is the one thing that should most likely stand out the most, okay? So when creating your player, you don't want to be using dark colors such as a dark green or a dark red, okay, or a dark blue. You wanna be using nice and bright colors such as a light blue, or a yellow, um, or a white, okay? So something that is nice and bright that the player can identify along a dark surface, okay? It's got to contrast the background. So I'm gonna create a new layer with Control-Shift-N. I'm gonna call this one our player right here. And for our player, I'm gonna make this a knight, okay? So it's just gonna be a knight. He'll be able to hold a sword, maybe a bow. Um, gonna be quite a versatile character. So, to begin, what we're going to do is create the silhouette for our character, okay? And this is basically going to be the outline um, that we are then going to fill in with detail. So, I'm just going to use this white color right here for the silhouette, and I'm going to go ahead and just outline our character. Now, in Pixelart, um, there are many, many different styles of creating characters, and um, different people have different ways of doing it. You might want to create um, stuff with more realistic proportions, or you might want to have more... Um, abstract proportions. Um, that's entirely up to you. I have my own sort of style I do. You might have your own sort of style. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, give you the process as I go along. So starting with the head, what we're going to do is I'm just going to give it a nice um, square head of five pixels. Okay, just something like that. There we go. Um, since it's a knight, we'll also probably put a little feather up on top of his head here. So poking out the helmet. Um, from here, we can then create the torso, and the torso is going to sort of go a bit behind his head, so his head's poking a bit forward. That can also give the illusion that he is actually facing in a forward direction rather than just sort of standing up straight looking at you. Um, so we're going to create it like so. Okay, bring his torso down a bit here. Okay, and then we can do the legs. Now for the legs, I like just doing simple little legs like this. So we've got the legs right there. Um, we can give him his front arm, which is just going to be three pixels in front of him like so. Uh, his rear arm is going to sort of be overlapping his body right here. So we can just give him uh, two little pixels here for the shoulder. And then there's also going to be a cape. And this cape is just going to run along his back like so. Okay, and there we go. That is the silhouette of our character. So from a distance, um, we're gonna make it so that this, you know, nothing else really has this sort of design. Uh, we've got this sort of cape in the back, and I think the most notable, not noticeable feature is going to be this feather here, okay, which is going to be um, sort of the identifier that this is our player character. So we've got our player sprite outline right here. Now we need to fill in the details. So let's start with the base colors of his armor. And for that, we're just going to select a color right here and start by coloring in the helmet. So that is going to be the helmet color like so. Um, now for the body, I am going to make the body a bit darker just so that the head stands out and that there's more of a contrast between where the head starts and the body ends. For example, if I just color uh, the rest of him right here in this gray color, whoops, uh, yep, just like this. Okay, um, you'll notice that it kind of all blends in a bit too much and we don't really have that much uh, definition of where the head is, where the arms are, where the legs are. It all just looks like he's wearing one big uh, suit. So what we need to do is divide these colors up, but still make them appear as if they are part of the same color set. And for that, we can choose a darker color for the body. So I'm just going to select this other dark color that comes with our color palette right here and I'm just going to color in the body like so. And there we go. And from here then we can fill in the arms. Now, this is entirely up to you. You can choose to go ahead and use this um, same color that we use for the head for the arms like that, or you can choose to use an even darker color for the arms, okay? You can choose to maybe use something like this for the arms, okay? I'm probably gonna go for this since it adds another layer of contrast uh, to show where the arms are, where the torso is, and where the head is. Uh, now we need to add in the details because we got our character here, but it doesn't really stand out that much. So first of all, let's color in the cape and the feather. I'm going to use this nice red color. We can fill those in just like so. 
as you can see, there we go. We've got some contrast added with the red, easily um, able to identify where our player is now. Uh, let's work on the helmet now, okay? And the helmet is where you can add um, add more to your character, okay? What sort of character are they? Are they a stern character, a funny character? Um, we're going to make our character look pretty serious, so he's going to have a dark colored uh, sort of opening on his visor here, so we're just going to have a uh, color, couple of pixels just like so. Uh, we might even want to add a bit of a reflection at the top here so we can get white and just add two pixels here to make it look like it is a metallic helmet. Um, and we'll go over um, looking at reflections, um, shine and all that later on once we get into making coins and stuff. But yeah, adding in sort of white specs can give it the illusion that this is some shiny armor. Okay, uh, we'll just do on the helmet though for to keep it nice and simple. Uh, so now we got everything, but it still looks quite simple, okay? And the torso, this is where it's happening. So you might go, okay, we might want to put some more uh, color contrast over in the legs like so, but, you know, even that doesn't really do much. So what I normally like to do is when I have these sort of medieval themed characters, I like to add in some basic um, just sort of straps, okay? Because a knight, he would have straps all over his armor. He'll have, you know, a belt and stuff. So we can add those in too. And also what I'm going to do is go ahead and maybe uh, just increase the height of our character here a bit. So I'm just going to make the legs go down a bit more, like so. Okay. Um, and we're also going to make the cape go down a bit more as well, just like that. And now let's add in our belts. So for this, I'm just going to select a brown color right here. And I'm just going to create a little belt outline, like so. Make, make it look like he also has a bit of a spender. And this also um, gives the player the illusion that this um, character is facing in the right hand direction, okay? Because um, they have their right arm uh, in the foreground, their left arm in the background. They have their face facing in a certain direction as well. So it's important that you have to um, that you create your character um, with facing a specific direction in mind, especially if it's a platformer. Um, even if it's just a normal 2D game, um, unless your character is facing directly at the camera for when they're moving down or moving up, um, you should really um, design your character in a way so that they are facing a certain direction. We can then also maybe add a bit of detail to the belt by adding a little gold belt buckle. Okay, and there we go. Um, you can, of course, add much more detail to this character if you wish, but I think for now, um, we're going to keep it like this. If you zoom out, you can still see that um, from the distance at which the player would be from the camera when playing the game, um, it does look pretty good, and it does stand out with the cape and with the feather. Um, so definitely adding in these identifiable features to both your player and your enemies are going to be good. Okay, so we've got our player here. Now, in the next lesson, we are going to be going over setting up a player walk cycle, okay? Because right now, we have our player for when they're just standing still, but what happens if we want our player to start walking, okay? How are we going to animate this player so that we have their legs lift up, and what things are going to react based on that, okay? So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all then in the next lesson.